You know, we are just a few seconds away. A lot of excitement for Minnesota basketball this year. Well, this was a team a year ago that was picked toward the bottom of the league, and they surpassed all expectations. And Lisa, they return all of their starters. They did have a little bit of a setback in the offseason. Eric Curry, a guy I really liked that was going to give them some minutes, tore up his heat, knee. They lose him, but you have the defensive returning player of the year in Reggie Lynch. You have an all-conference performer in Nate Mason coming back. Jordan Murphy takes over in terms of double-double machines. He had 12 of those a year ago, so a lot to like in the Twin Cities. Okay, yeah, they return almost 80% of their scoring and rebounding. Let's listen in to Coach Patino. A lot of guys back. Um, a lot of guys have gotten better. Um, certainly an unfortunate injury with Eric Curry that'll hurt us uh, from a depth standpoint, so we're going to have to have other guys uh, stand up. Uh, step up, but uh, we got a good team, and uh, we got to be ready right away because we got a very tough schedule. So uh, excited to get going. Thank you, Coach. Open it up for questions. Let's go right hand side on the aisle, second row. Morning, Coach. Good morning. Marcus Fuller, uh, Minneapolis Star Tribune. Um, coach, it, going into the first practice uh, last month, you had a few guys banged up, and um, you know Reggie Lynch, uh, one of them, and he's he's not here today. Can you talk about just the the importance of being healthy going into the season and, and the status of these players? Yeah, it's been difficult because we have had a lot of guys who are allowed to practice but not do contact, so it's tough to figure out. Where are we at from a defensive standpoint, a rebounding standpoint, all those physicality things that you can't work on. Uh, so Reggie, Devante, uh, Dupree have consistently been on contact restrictions uh, uh, of 15 minutes at the most so far. Uh, you know, so Reggie's got meeting with the doctor. We expect him to be cleared soon. Um, probably today would be my guess. And, you know, Devante will be extremely patient with uh, just because of his medical uh, history. Uh, and Dupree is another guy. He's had that stress reaction. And all summer, it's just we're just trying to get him healthy. So I, I've kind of been like an NBA coach where I've really, really limited those guys. Uh, so it's been difficult to gauge where we're at. Um, but we'll get healthy. I don't think any of them our major concerns. We just got to be patient. Now I got to be patient. Nate Mason was another one. Missed a couple days of practice, but uh, he did a little bit yesterday, so he'll be fine with a minor ankle sprain. But you know, get it out of the way now, right? Hopefully. Questions. Front row, on the aisle. Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, there's been some talk that the one and done rule could change in college basketball, and I just wonder what your thoughts are on the impact that that rule has had, and what, how you would ideally like to see that uh, play out going forward. Well, I don't, I don't have the answer, um, you know, so I'm not really sure from a one and done standpoint. Uh, we obviously haven't had any, so it's, it hasn't really affected our program from the sense of all the turnover, uh, et cetera. But I, I do think that it seems like the NBA is now, uh, they care to kind of acknowledge it and change it. Uh, I don't really know what the, the answer is. Uh, I don't know if I'm smart enough to figure that out. But I do think that where it's at right now is not good. Um, you know, if kids don't want to go to college, uh, we probably shouldn't make them go. Um, you know, but I'm not sure what exactly it is. I think the trendy thing that everybody said is the baseball model. I don't even know what that is, so I'm not sure. Let's go all the way in the back left corner. Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, Richard, with a guy like Reggie Lynch, who's that gifted defensively, but also finds himself in foul trouble, what have you done to maybe advise him as to how he can, you know, stay on the floor and avoid some of those fouls this coming season? Begged, pleaded interventions tried them all um you know he's i think he needs to realize from a foul trouble standpoint um it's not always blocking shots that's getting him in foul trouble i think if you cut down on the other things uh maybe it's him getting tired and making a silly mistake um you know improving the fundamentals of how you're guarding it you know and, and just teaching him because we don't want to take away from that aggressiveness from a shot blocking standpoint because he's as good as it gets when it comes to shot blocking um, but we've got to find a way to cut down 
the other fouls. I think if we cut down the other fouls, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll still be able to be aggressive from a shot blocking standpoint because we need him to do that. Uh, so we just continue to teach him. Um, as best we can, and, and I know he's a willing learner. I think last year, more than anything, because he jumped up in conferences from, you know, Missouri Valley's obviously a very good one to the Big Ten, but there's different personnel in there, so that was an adjustment. So I just think he'll be better this year because of it, a little bit wiser. Right-hand side, second row on the aisle. Uh, Evan Daniels, Fox Sports. Uh, how do you work Isaiah Washington into this group? You already got some really talented guards. You know, Isaiah is an interesting one because he's, he's very, very talented. Um, but he's a freshman, you know, he's got a long way to go with little things, you know, freshmen need to understand sometimes it's what, you know, you do on the court that prohibits you to get on the court and with Jameer Harris and Isaiah, whether it's mistakes and so on, if they can minimize those things, they're going to play a lot. Uh, but Isaiah brings a dimension that we haven't really had. He is a phenomenal passer. Um, end to end, he goes as good as anybody out there. You know, I've tinkered with lineups um, to find a way to get him on the court. But, you know, when, when you're talking about playing time and how do you fit guys in, that's a great problem to have. Um, you know, we, we had our first time in four years, NBA scouts come to our practice. It was a great feeling. We haven't had that. Uh, so it's a good problem to have. Time for one more question. All the way in the back, right-hand side on the aisle. Coach, Tim Fisher, Learfield. With the tournament coming to Madison Square Garden, moving up a week, have you thought about how that's going to affect just the schedule and just uh, everything for you throughout the season? I haven't thought about it much. Um, I guess I'm a little bit superstitious. It's, uh, you know, we went to the tournament last year. I want to go again. Uh, so it's one of those things where I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it, when I come to it. Um, you know, but it's... It's made the schedule a little bit funky, a little bit different, but that's okay. I mean, anybody who's played in this building knows uh, the opportunity that it presents and, and how special it is to play here. And sometimes you've got to sacrifice a little bit. Uh, so if we're fortunate enough to be in the NCAA tournament again at the end of the year, great problem to have. So, you know, I, I think when you get towards the end of the year, a lot of it is rest, but a lot of it is making sure you're sharp with certain things. But, again, I, I welcome that challenge because that means we're in the NCAA tournament again. We actually have time for one more question. Should have dragged it out longer, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, seeing none. Thank you, Coach. Good Thank luck you. this year. Okay, so Richo Pitino will walk off the podium and zero questions about his dad and the recruiting scandal that's going on. How much does that surprise you? I was a little surprised, but pleasantly so. I mean, you know what? I, uh, I come to these things to kind of get away from, from the nitty-gritty stuff. I thought he handled himself extremely well, but at least I was very surprised, especially with things on the forefront, the questions that were posed to the commissioner. I was surprised that a question wasn't posed to, to Coach Patino, but uh, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for myself. I didn't have to listen to it. Well, you might have to listen to Dave Rebson. He may have yeah. maybe a question or two coming up later here in the day, who was on site at New York City, by the way. So uh, Minnesota, we saw Richard Patino address some of the things. I just have one question about Nate Mason. Obviously, is going to be a very big key piece for the Gophers. What's the next step for him this year? I think to become an even better and more consistent three-point shooter, he made a big jump from his sophomore to his junior year in terms of being not just the, the ability to get to the basket off the dribble, but also stretching the team out of the opposition from behind there. He got better in that regard. I would expect him to take another look. And sometimes he can kind of go into the background a little bit. I think as a senior, they'll need him to be even more of an assertive leader vocally because the expectations are going to be extremely high. That's not necessarily his strength or not necessarily his force or in his makeup, but I would expect him to become a little bit more of a vocal leader because the expectations are going to be high. And the other teams, when you're the point guard, right, wrong, or indifferent, a lot of guys look to you for leadership, both vocally and in terms of your effort on the floor. And I think he can take an even bigger leap in that regard as well. Okay, so the